Dawn and I enjoy a trip to the Elk River every year, and it's been very satisfying watching this river flourish. Despite the enormous pressure and seasonal flooding, the elk, as you will see, is an exceptional fishery. So join us today as we take you down the Elk River on Sport Fishing on the Fly. Fishing on the Fly is brought to you in part by Islander Reels, G. Loomis Rods, and Cloudvale Outdoor Gear. cleaned up for the, for the trip today. Clean enough yet? Oh yeah, they are nice and clean. Hi <laughs> well, hey everyone, welcome to today's edition of Sport Fishing on the Fly. We're at the Elk River in southeastern British Columbia, and this, I think more than any other river in BC, is where people are coming to fish. They are, it's, it's a big destination, mainly because of the cutthroat, easy to catch, and a lot of fish. Well, they've managed it really well over the years too. They had the flood a few years ago, they put catch and release on after that, and now you can actually keep one fish. Yeah, which is good. I think you should uh, have a, a catch fishery yep. because it allows some fish to be taken out and some new ones to get bigger. But with the catch and release and the barbless hooks, it's just made it great. It is single barbless hook for sure. Yep. You can't have a barb on your hook, so yep. make sure you pinch them down exactly. when you come here. But you know what's interesting is you were here last year. Yeah. And when you guys put in, there were 12 drift boats going down. A lot. So it gets a lot of pressure. But you know what's sustaining it? Because we've heard this year that there's a 23-inch cutthroat That's that was caught cut. and released, which is big. Yeah. So you got the quality, you got the quantity. Yeah. It's great. And that's solved uh, due to management. They've managed it properly. And that's, it really comes down to catch and release, barbless hooks, you know, the fly fishing. Yeah. You're going to lose one in a hundred, and that's, that's the rate, which is pretty low. We got West Slope cutthroat today, so we got the good yeah. dry fly. But we also got dollies that we're going to try for when we get down to some of the bigger pools. The big artillery. We've got six inch flies that we're going to be casting for the big dollies. Same ones we tied in our video mag. That's right. A while ago. Yeah, we'll give them a try. Yeah. <laughs> So it should be a good day. We're just waiting for a little bit of heat to turn on here to bring the fish up, yeah. get them looking up. It should, should be, be a good day. Nothing yet. Don's still got the trude on. I switched over to a caddisfly. Well, there's nothing moving yet. But it's an awful nice day to be out on the water. And you know with cutthroats, it's only a matter of time. All right, well, here we go. Here's how we're starting things out today. It oh, just it's like took, a nice one. Took a little bit of time. Well, you know, we, we both had the Royal Trude on, or the Cutthroat Candy. You might have seen it on one of our other bench segments. Cutthroat Candy's been known to be deadly. But it's just a matter of time before they come up. But I changed it up. I went to a caddis. I saw a caddis. Oh, that's a beauty. This is a nice fish, yeah. I put on a, a CDC caddis, actually. What I'm going to do is going to slide out around over here, I think. Get a little closer. Right in the net. Okay, so get rid of the rod. What a healthy fish. Oh, just gorgeous. Fly out. I wait to see this beautiful cutthroat. Look at how fat that is. That is, that's amazing how fat he is. I get a better look at him that way for, for how fat he is. We're gonna get him back in the water here. 
You're just going to swim off nice and slow, back to feed again. 40 degree water right now. Man, you don't want them to revive too long. Make sure they're ready to go. So what I did is I switched over to the caddis fly. Saw one fish rising along there. And I'm not sure if this was the same guy or not. Just cast in there and he came up. So I think what we're going to do right now, we're going to put the pontoon boats ashore. We're going to fish this whole run up here. And I think that was the first fish we saw rise. So as the day goes on now, we should see more rising fish. All righty. Just come to a real nice bank here. Now this is what we look for. This is classic cutthroat water. Got the head end of the run, flows down and it just gets into that five foot, four foot, five foot depth all along this bank. And that's where those big guys love it. There's just enough flow to go through to keep them nice and steady. And the feed all just drifts right into this bank. And that's what you're looking for, where all the feed's gonna go. So how we're gonna proceed again is the bottom of the, bottom of the run. You're gonna start working this probably inside out and just keep working all the way up the run. It should, uh, there should be fish sitting here all the way out into the, to the middle of the run. So we'll just start off by casting a few short ones and see if there's anything. We haven't seen too many fish working. I've seen a few out in the foam line, but the bigger guys are going to be sitting near the edge here. So we'll try a couple in close here first. See if anything's there. And again, we've got the cutthroat candy on. This is a traditionally a really good cutthroat fly. If we see a hatch coming off, I'll change, but right now it's fairly early. It's a good attractor pattern to start with. And again, look for structure in the water. I see a few boulders out there a little further out, and I'm eventually going to get there, but I want to just start in close first, see if there's anything tight. Well, I've taken a few casts in tight, and I didn't pull anything out of there right here, so what I'm going to do is walk a few steps forward and get out to that foam line a bit and keep working my all the way up, just zigzag right up the hole until we get into some fish. And I just saw another one out in that foam line and eventually we are going to have to get out to that foam line. All right, one more up in this bank since I've moved up. The neat thing about this fly too, the retrieve, since it has the rubber legs, you can give it a little motion here and there. You know, just give the give your rod tip the odd flick here and there. Just get those rubber legs moving a bit. And if it skids a bit, that's fine. That's what those rubber legs are for, to give it a little motion. I've got the only fish along the bank, but I'm gonna get out into that foam right now. There's that foam line. Let's see if we can get something out there. Oh, wow, <laughs> what a take. That was a tough cast out there too. What I did is I was actually, you could see the bank behind us. We'll get a shot it for you. It's really steep, really, really steep bank. And you can't get that cast. So you move downstream, make your cast parallel with the water. And then in your last flick, you point your rod tip out into the current. And that's where your line will go. And I got this good drift over them with a caddis. And this is a beautiful cutthroat. All right, I think this guy's ready. Let's just, let's get him up here. Oh man, maybe he's not ready. Oh yeah. Oh, that's a beautiful fish. Now that is a fish. Open your mouth for me. Look at that. Is that a beautiful cutthroat trout? Huh, look at the pretty cuts on them. Just an absolutely phenomenal fish. Well, if you've never fished for West Slope cuts, they are just some of the best fish. Whoa, there he goes. Oh, nothing nice fish. Oh, that's the best when you get to 
to fish to him. We saw him sitting just off the edge of that rock there, and I tried so many different flies. I tried a little blue wing olive, I tried a stimulator, I tried a tom thumb, I tried a caddis fly, and I finally put on a mayfly, and it's about a size 14 to 16 parachute mayfly, and this guy finally came up and took it, and I uh, just, you know, if we, we could have moved on, and we thought about moving on, but I saw this guy there, and I just had the patience to sit there and work it, and work it, and work it, until he finally took something. And what happened was the cast before, he actually came up and refused it because it dragged out, but I knew he came up and he had a really good look at it, and then he refused it. Wow, wow. What a fish. Huh, another clone of the other ones. Okay, fella, come here. These fish are so fat. Just amazing how fat they are. The rod down here over the road. Look at the girth on this fish. Okay, here's the fly. I'll show you that in a second. Take a look at that fish. That is about an 18 inch cutthroat. Look at the beautiful cuts on it, the colors. Look at how fat that fish is. That is one very healthy West Slope cutthroat trout. Put up the good fights. We're gonna just turn them a little bit here, get them out so some water will flow over his gills. And again, it's just so rewarding to, uh, to actually catch that guy. There you go, he's just gonna sit right down there and sulk. Whoa! Oh, there he goes, he's darting. Oh, well, there's a nice cutty again. Just change the fly up. We're gonna put on a real nice pattern, one of our favorites, which is a parachute Adams. Whoa! This guy is fighting tough. And I put on just a little bigger size. I got about a size 14. I think he was using a 14 too, actually. Yeah, I just put on this little, a little bit bigger, about a size 14, parachute Adams. Whoa! And we were fishing this bank pretty hard behind us. And we just decided to move out, so I rode back up and I saw some fish rising on the other bank. So I slid over and put it out there and I got this guy. Gee, they are healthy fish. Wow. They're just extra fat now. I just got to clip on my net here so I don't lose it. And let's show everybody this guy. As always, barbless hooks should just pop out of this, this guy just right in the corner of the lip. Clear the line, try to turn him upside down, get him disorientated, and there he is. That is a nice fish, isn't it? Look at how pretty that is. That's a good 17, 18 inch fish. Beauty, just a beautiful fish. And we'll get him going here again. And he wants to go. There he goes. Goes to sulk on the bottom. Wow. <laughs> just a great day. Again, just stay and work the banks. Like, we've worked this one bank pretty hard. But there are a lot of fish there. And it really showed when Grant went through and showed you how many different flies he went to catch that one fish. I mean, he went through a handful of flies just to catch that one fish. So if one fly isn't working, switch it up. Because if you know the fish are there, they're going to eventually take it. This week on the bench, we're going to tie you up the Parachute Adams. Now the Parachute Adams is probably the best overall mayfly pattern you're ever going to use. Make sure you have these materials ready before you tie the fly. For the hook, we're going to use a TMC 100 size 14. We'll use some black UTC 70 thread to tie with, some short fine deer hair for the tail, some hare's ear dubbing for the body, some white calf tail for the wing, and a grizzly hackle for the hackle. I stack some of my short fine deer hair and we're going to measure it up and I don't like it the tail too long just about as long as the hook that's about as far as you want to go just as long as the hook measure it back and tie it in for the tail after I've tied the tail in I've actually moved my thread up to about three quarters of the way up the hook towards the eyelet now I've taken some white calf tail and we're just going to tie in a nice wing here a nice wing stem that we'll actually use to parachute after when I'm tying in my wing, I also like to go around the base of the wing, 
quite a few times, at least six or seven wraps around the base and that really allows that wing to sit real nice and upright for parachuting. I've moved my thread to the back of the hook, just in front of the tail, and now we're actually gonna put on our hair's ear dubbing and just dub all in a body. And we definitely wanna taper the body, keeping it thin at the back and taper it towards the front. So we'll just dub on right now. Now I'm gonna wrap it forward and taper the body. Wrap it right up to the wing. Now that I have the body tied in, I'm gonna take a grizzly hackle and tie it in where the body ended. And we're just gonna wrap it around our wing that we just formed and form a nice parachute hackle on the fly. Now to finish the fly off, I'm gonna take some more hair's ear dubbing and I'm gonna dub it on just a little bit thicker. And we're just gonna wrap it around the front of the fly to form the head. A couple times behind the hackle we just tied in just to fill in the body and then around the front to form the head on the fly. And there it is, the finished parachute atoms. You know, as I said in the intro, this is the most versatile mayfly imitation you're ever going to use. Always make sure you have some in your fly box. Oh, right. Nice fish out in the trees. Yeah. Now here, here's really good to look at. You can see how the fallen trees, if you pan up there right now, you can see those trees in the background. And right in between, there's a real nice slack spot of water. Granny, I made the cast in there. Didn't get any hits. You followed me exactly. Put the cast in perfect. Bang. And you got this guy. And you know what? I missed the first guy. Oh, did you? I missed the first guy. Put it back <laughs> in there again, and this guy came up and took it. And then I had to pull like heck oh, to get away because the tree's right in the water. But that is prime location. Coming down through a run, the trees have fallen right where the fish stack up. That gives them a little break water. And it's perfect. Yeah. They're just sitting there. Oh. oh, man. There he goes. And a really good thing, too, is to bring the Try to get to shore as much as you can and obviously over in the slack water because that's where you want to be. Boy, he's really splashing there, isn't he? He's working the top pretty hard. <laughs> he's working hard. You know, another good point too, I don't know if you touched on it earlier, is with the guides. There's lots of guide boats out as well. Yeah. And most of the guide boats are really good. If they see you working a stretch of water, they're going to leave you alone and let you work it. There's the odd guide that's probably not as, you know, has the same etiquette as everybody else. But same yes, with yeah. you, if you're working the river, if you come down and there's a guide there, yeah. well, you just let them have that run and you just have to go into the next one. Yeah, and always move. If they're working one side of the pocket, move around them. Don't go zipping through the pocket. Make sure you, you use etiquette, proper okay. river etiquette, and that's just getting out of their way. And usually you do. If they're fishing a stretcher run, they're going to work it. you got to let them have that run. And the elk is getting busier, like we said in the intro. It's a pretty busy river. We've had about five or six boats go by us, but... Everybody is catching fish like this. Everybody's oh. having a good time. And there he goes. Just like that. You took my fly. Oh, away. and he took your fly. You know what? That was my last one, too. Oh, <laughs> no. That's always a favorite. Isn't that always uh, a favorite? Why don't you say, why didn't you use the net? Use you know the what? Net. Why don't you use the net? Oh, what a bonehead. <laughs> anyway. That was a good fish, though. That was a beauty. I'm sure we got some underwater footage of that. Yep. Everybody got to see him, and it was. That was a, oh, that that was a, a healthy fish, fish yeah. Go on. Oh, yeah. Come on, boys. Oh, he's healthy. Wow. I just slid up into the hole where ground was working, and Granny just had the huge one come up. The big guy. He tried <laughs> to muscle him across set. on the, see a big stump out there. He tried to muscle him across, but uh, he just snapped him off, and that was a big fish. Wow. This guy's nice. He's, he's fighting good. I think he might be ready to come in. Here he comes. Boy, just in the top. Oh, nice lip. fish. Oh, another nice fish. They're all big. Can't really do a whole bunch of kneeling down here because I'm at such a bad angle. But let's take this guy. Put him upside down. Barbless hook just pops right out. And there he is. Got a beauty. Look at that. Oh, geez, look at the colors. Oh, and there he goes. He just wants to go. <laughs> that looks like it, Andy. Oh yeah, this is a good fish for sure. Very healthy Aww. fish. Oh, you know what? Every fish we caught today, all real nice fish. Yeah, it's amazing. It, well, I wasn't ready for that today. No. I wasn't. I, I thought we were going to get some smaller ones. Well, we did get the odd small one, and we, you know, we could have showed a, a few of the smaller ones we got.
Well, you just like to get them in quick and unhook them. Yeah. And the big guys you can't, so they're just they're perfect to show. But the yep. little guys were nice. Guess now, what I got on one. Guess what you're going to use, though. Oh, yeah, we're going to use the net this yeah, time. Yeah, you're going to use the net. Oh, you cutthroat candy. Yeah, you betcha. You got them on the candy. Well, you know what right I, I saw tonight was there was a lot of... Uh, he doesn't like Cases this net. pops off. He's just barely hooked in the oh, lip. and there he goes. Oh, he just got off. He just got off just like that. Yeah, I could see that, too. It was just, just barely in the hooked. corner. I he couldn't reach him. Hooked. He didn't like the net. That was nice and that, fat, I That might have been maybe the biggest of the day. I don't know. Wow. No, that just good. all nice They're all the same. We're all 17, 18 inches, very healthy. Very big, and yeah, the cutthroat candy, we tied them up last night, sitting in the hotel room. Yeah. You thought they were going to work, and the reason I went back to it is because there's lots of October caddis coming off right now, yep. and there's some bigger mayflies. So thought, we'll put something bigger on to attract them up. Plus, it's a little whiter, you know, it's getting a little near dark. It's yeah. Time, we're almost down to the end of the float. Yeah. That's but it's been a real good day today, really enjoyable. Most enjoyable, yeah. yeah. That was a lot of fun. I didn't know what to expect, but the size of the fish is just, it's amazing. <laughs> This Elk River is incredible. It's, it's withstanding all the pressure that it's getting. Yeah. And then some. Yeah, and it's, it's managed right, though. That's yeah. the big key. You know, we passed a lot of boats on the way down, and it's just managed good. Yeah. We've got the big fish now. The guys are just catch and release, and that's all it's all about. We said at the onset this is one of the favorite, or maybe even the favorite, destination rivers yeah. in all of BC. Mm -hmm. Well, you should put it on your calendar, too, because it is amazing. Yeah. When you get here, though, make sure you take care. And conserve the waters, follow the regs they've got here. And you're going to have a great day of fishing. Very enjoyable. <laughs> we definitely have an enjoyable <laughs> well, yeah. day. See you next time. When we take you sport fishing on the fly. Wow, that was a nice one, too. Sport fishing on the fly has been brought to you in part by Fly Fusion Magazine, Superfly Fly Tying Materials, and High Drift Boats.